In this screencast, we will discuss ultrasound of the appendix and how to diagnose acute appendicitis. Into this screencast, you should be able to recognize and describe the key features for diagnosing acute appendicitis on ultrasound. Let's talk a little bit about acute appendicitis. It's the most common reason for children to present to the hospital and require an emergent intra-abdominal surgery. It has a very classic presentation with right lower quadrant pain, right lower quadrant tenderness to palpation, an intolerance to PO intake, rebound pain indicating peritonitis on physical exam, and fever and leukocytosis with the left shift. Despite this classic presentation, many children will present with atypical symptoms, making the diagnosis of appendicitis in young children challenging. So why and how do we do ultrasound for suspected acute appendicitis? Well, first of all, we have to use a very specific technique when we are trying to find the appendix with ultrasound. The appendix's location is variable. It tends to arise one to two centimeters below the ileocecal valve on the cecum, but it can be retrocecal. It can be obscured by overlying loops of colon or small bowel. So we do what we call graded compression. We start in the right mid-abdomen, we find the cecum or the right colon, we press down gently but firmly, and we compress the right mid-abdomen and work our way down into the right lower quadrant. This pushes the loops of small bowel out of the way and hopefully exposes the appendix, which classically lies over the psoas muscle and iliac vessels. The problem with ultrasound for suspected acute appendicitis is it is very dependent on the skill and experience of the person doing the ultrasound. That variability in user experience and skill results in a wide range of sensitivities and specificities that we can see uh, in the literature. There is also a relatively high false positive rate. So at surgery, after using ultrasound for suspected appendicitis, you may find literature reporting normal appendix at surgery in about 5 to 25% of patients. Let's talk about what the normal appendix should look like on ultrasound. I have provided two ultrasound images from the same patient who had presented to the emergency department with lower abdominal pain. In these images, we can see the psoas muscle, and I outlined it in blue for you there. We can see the iliac artery, which is incompressible, and I outlined it in red for you there. We can then see overlying the psoas and iliac artery, a thin tubular structure, the appendix. I outline the appendix there in yellow. Notice that there is a blind end to the appendix. And we also have calipers on the appendix showing that the diameter of the appendix in this particular child is less than four millimeters. I've also provided a sagittal image where the psoas muscle is oriented differently than in the first image, but we can still see the appendix. Now we have the appendix in short axis and we can see that the appendix diameter remains very small and we don't see adjacent fluid inflammation or wall thickening of the appendix. So this is a nice normal appendix measuring less than four millimeters in the expected location of the appendix, right lower quadrant overlying the psoas and iliac artery. Now let's look at a case of acute appendicitis. This appendix is oriented in a slightly different manner than the last appendix. So we will start with a sagittal image. In this sagittal image, we can again see the psoas, this time in long axis instead of in short axis. And overline the psoas, we see the appendix, which I've outlined here in yellow. Now, notice this appendix is much larger than the last appendix we saw. And if we look on our transverse image where they have calipers, we can see that the appendix is measuring greater than eight millimeters. So that is abnormal based on size criteria. The normal appendix should be less than six millimeters. Six to eight millimeters is equivocal and greater than eight millimeters is abnormal. In addition to seeing the dilated appendix, we can see fluid within the lumen of the appendix here, and we, the wall of the appendix appears thickened. We also see these areas of echogenic fat that are outlined in purple. And these areas of echogenic fat are thought to represent fat stranding or inflammation within the fat around the acutely inflamed appendix. Another key feature for diagnosing acute appendicitis that is best accomplished or really only accomplished with ultrasound is determining whether or not an appendix is compressible. So here I'm showing you a short axis view of the appendix, okay, and the in this 
case, we have both uncompressed and compressed images. Okay, so here the ultrasonographer is using sort of a firm compression, but not strong compression. And here they press down even harder to see if they can get that appendix, which measured greater than eight millimeters, to collapse with pressure. And in this case, there is no significant change in the diameter of the appendix when it is compressed versus non-compressed. Also note, we can see a lot of echogenic fat surrounding the appendix, another sign that there is acute inflammation. Now let's take a look at a few normal versus abnormal examples. <clears throat> On the left-hand side of your screen, I'm showing you a case of a normal appendix. We can see the iliac arteries. We can see the appendix overlying the iliac, and this is gonna actually represent the psoas muscle here. And we can see that this appendix is only measuring about one to two millimeters. Very impressive that someone was able to find a structure so small, but with the right skill and experience, you can often find the appendix. If we look at the other case, we see an appendix that is substantially larger, okay, measuring a diameter of eight millimeters. Okay, and that would be consistent with acute appendicitis on its own. In addition, we see this area of very echogenic fat okay, adjacent to this appendix, again, representing inflamed fat stranding. Here are just two more cases. One, normal appendix and one acute appendicitis. So here we can see the normal appendix. We measure the diameter to be less than three millimeters, which is well within normal limits. And on the other side, we have a dilated blind ending tubular structure that is measuring over six millimeters. We also, again, are gonna see that echogenic fat adjacent to the appendix consistent with acute appendicitis. Another sign that I haven't shown you in here is the presence of free fluid near the appendix, which can also increase your specificity for diagnosing acute appendicitis. There are some pitfalls that you need to be aware of when ordering ultrasound for acute appendicitis or when interpreting it. One, the ultrasonographer or the interpreting physician can mistake small bowel loops for the appendix, and I've seen this happen. The loops of small bowel tend to be larger than the appendix should be. And so you may see what seems to be a blind ending tubular structure, but it is actually a loop of small bowel, and it's going to measure greater than six to eight millimeters, and therefore could be called as a false positive. To ensure that you're looking at the appendix, you need to really see a blind ending structure. It's also best if you can trace that blind ending structure back to the cecum, and the appendix tends to be aperistaltic, meaning if you watch loops of small bowel, they tend to contract or peristals for the appendix. It's not typically peristals. Another pitfall is that secondary inflammation from other intra-abdominal processes can cause the appendix to appear inflamed or have wall thickening adjacent free fluid or that echogenic fat. Things like Crohn's disease, pelvic inflammatory disease, or an inflamed Meckel's diverticulum can all result in secondary inflammation in the right lower quadrant. Another main pitfall is that the appendix may not be visualized when ruptured. So if the appendix was fluid filled and inflamed and then ruptured, that rupturing can cause it to become decompressed. And that decompressed appendix can be very difficult to see, especially in the setting of peritonitis. So why use ultrasound versus CT? Ultrasound is really used over CT because it does not require ionizing radiation. And we know that children in particular are more sensitive to ionizing radiation than say our adult population. Ultrasound also has the advantage of being able to use that dynamic compression to see whether or not the appendix, when it's in that equivocal state of six to eight millimeters, will compress with pressure. CT does have a lot of advantages. It's less user dependent, so it's not as dependent on having a highly skilled ultrasonographer. It is more sensitive and more specific uh, across a large range of meta-analysis, and it better characterizes any complications should there be perforated appendicitis, such as an inflammatory mass or phlegmon or abscess or bowel obstruction that is resulting from appendicitis but it does have that disadvantage of ionizing radiation, again, which we know our pediatric population is more sensitive to. So we try to avoid the use of computed tomography unless we find it necessary in cases where ultrasound is equivocal. In summary, we're gonna use graded compression ultrasound for first-line imaging of suspected appendicitis in children. 
In some cases, we will also use graded compression ultrasound as a first-line imaging modality for suspected appendicitis in pregnant women, although MRI is really starting to take over that role in pregnant women. Acute appendicitis can be diagnosed by an appendix greater than six millimeters that is incompressible and has adjacent inflammation or fluid. Ultrasound has this variable sensitivity and specificity due to inter-user variability and the need for a highly skilled, experienced ultrasound operator. Unfortunately, a large number of cases you will not see the appendix, not be able to visualize the appendix due to overlying bowel or a retrocecal or abnormally positioned appendix. And in that case, you're going to have to use your clinical judgment on whether or not you suspect appendicitis is present and whether a CT will be required for additional characterization. Again, CT requires ionizing radiation, but it does perform better. We don't want to use it as a first-line imaging modality because of that ionizing radiation, but if necessary, CT can be a very effective imaging modality for diagnosing and characterizing appendicitis and its complications. Thank you for your time.